Tomorrow's smart cities are supposed to be efficient, connected, environmentally sensitive, and rich in social capital. But what precisely does this mean in practical terms? What will smart cities really be like as places to live and to work? And what role will smart cities have in supporting new models of joined-up digital lifestyles? ENT Video spoke to the experts at the Digital London Summit to find out. So I think if we ask ourselves what's what's definitional, what makes a smart city, it's probably a city that realizes it has challenges, that realizes it isn't smart. If a city doesn't want to change, it's not a smart city. The role of the smart city is really threefold. So it is about economic um, growth, it's about delivering a great place to live and work, and it's about um, a delivering growth in a in a resource constrained world in the ecological age. So we believe that. Um, cities have a role, smart cities and technology and de- open data and data in general has a role to play in delivering all those things. So a lot of cliches in terms of words that are out there. Talk about a smart city, people talk about a digital economy, uh, people talk about cloud um, and I always talk about a high performance network itself and, and a high performance network is really what's driving the ecosystem and people being able to communicate whether it's within a city itself or within multiple cities, you know, a broader ecosystem. It's very interesting how an organization that is social media aware would uh, look at inhabiting a smart city now. What can they do really to be able to uh, help themselves in that space? We've seen such a great evolution of open data. So organizations, businesses and governments around the world freeing their data up so that it is uh, available for coders, programmers and developers to put together with other data to make uh, new information that is really relevant and interesting for that business, making new products and services with that business and other data and essentially uh, more services for that business just for itself. Very, very interesting that in fact Google is now predicting flu outbreaks better than the American CDC, the Center for Disease Control. Um, that their ability to look at search results and identify the patterns of, of, of you know, the, the people are searching for symptoms. And when they search for symptoms, they're actually giving something away about the fact that they're not well. We've seen when government first released its open data looking at releasing crime data and travel <laughs> routes. So they put them two, two together to look for mothers at which route it was safe to take their kids home from school, for example. So real applications. Now you take that into a city environment and a business environment they want to, may, might want to look at what jobs are available within good transport reasons. So they may, might put their social recruitment data alongside transport data and to look at are, are there eligible graduates in a field um, and geolocation data to be able to serve up really interesting propositions for people today. I think San Francisco is doing some really interesting things. They've been pioneers in the whole smart city uh, uh, area. Um, in particular, I think one, one really interesting example is around parking and what they're doing with parking. So they have using sensor technology, putting sensors in all the car spaces that they control in the city and then that allows them to have real time data about whether that those parking spaces are in use, which they can then use for um, analysis purposes but also more importantly to deliver that information to the people who are driving around in their sp- in their cars looking for a space. Um, frankly, the Olympics is going to be very, very interesting. I, I think that all of the, you know, if, they, if there's going to be integrated transport, um, it better be fluid and deal with the social side of things because there are going to be really useful insights to be gleaned there. That, you know, you can spend all of your time thinking, well, okay, we've got the information from um, London Transport, um, we've got the information from um, the, 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 the ambulance service, we've got the information from um, the Olympics Committee, that's all we need. Um, I think that's probably not true. I think that if they're not doing a good job of listening to the City of London and the citizens of London, the event's not going to be everything it should. If, in fact, that the operators themselves are not able to monetize, then they're not going to continue to make the investments, whether it's with you know, high-end optics or whether it's some of our high-end you know, routing capacity. So it's, it's not a matter of um, if it happens. It has to, it's just how it's going to happen. And I think there's a lot of different ways. It could be through the government stepping in with some of the regulatory issues. Uh, it could also be with different business models where we have that cooperation you know, you look at some of the over-top players, are they competing with me or are they also cooperating with me? I think uh, smart organizations who recruit, who 
position themselves within a smart city environment will really attract a new caliber of individual that's actually being digitally connected and um, uh, used to using great technology in an interesting way will be attracted to uh, work within companies within, within a particular geo region. We've already seen the uh, much mooted Silicon Roundabout and actually the involvement of tech and startup companies actually move into a physical locale because of uh, individual connectivity and uh, services that are available within a specific region. I think that will become more and more prevalent, yes. Thank <laughs> you.